Well, welcome to your first Game Maker lesson, and we're going to be building this game here. It's called Catch the Clown. Now, what is Game Maker? It's a games development environment that'll be fantastic for you making platform games and scrolling player games. But 3D games like First Person Shooter can be done if you've got the professional version of Game Maker but it's not really a strong point of the game and while you'll have an opportunity in the course to try to create one from a demo that I give you it's uh, it's not a strong point of this software and it's really for the more advanced students. Before you write any game you are absolutely going to have to have an understanding of what it is that you're trying to achieve at the end. So really make sure you've got a good grip on how your game's going to operate, what the rewards and uh, penalties are going to be to your player, what controls are going to be used and what things are going to be look like before you sit down and start programming. Now for your very first game we'll start with something nice and simple. First of all though this icon here indicates what uh, you're looking for on the network and when you go to run the game. It's Game Maker Lite, an absolutely free download from the internet. So you can grab a copy off the internet or go to the student common drive on the network and grab a copy from the Infotech Game Maker folder there. Once you've installed Game Maker, we'll be able to start our first game, which we call Catch the Clown. Now it's going to look something like this, but first of all, think about it. What are you actually seeing there? There's not a lot maybe three, four things. You're certainly seeing a clown. Well, I hope you are anyway, if you're looking at the video. There is, around all the edges, a brick border or a wall, which I guess has to keep the clown in the playing area, and a red background. In addition to that, there's music that goes with this game, you'll see in just a couple of moments, and there are some sounds that occur as you play as well, two different ones. So three different sounds and three different graphics are needed just from what we've talked about so far, as you look at that. Now, all of those three graphics and three sounds need to be copied from Student Common or downloaded from your Virtual Classroom assignment message for your first assignment before you start to program the game. When you do get those graphics, there'll be six little files you get, three graphics ones and three sound ones, please pop them all into a particular folder on your laptop um, devoted to this project because every game we make will get its own folder. This folder you can call clown and you save it into your IT area in your My Documents on your computer. Let's have a look at what the game looks like in play. <laughs> There you go, 60 seconds of what must be some of the most ordinary game playing you've ever seen in your life. But hopefully you get an idea. He's bouncing around the room. Let's just analyse all of what was going on. We have a playing area, and we call that player area a room in Game Maker. It has a red background, it has brick walls around the edges, and a clown. In addition, we have to notice that the clown moves in a random direction. And as the game starts, the, the, some music starts. Um, what else do we notice? Well, if you leave him alone, the clown will bounce off walls, and when he collides with a wall, we'll hear a sound. So two things happen when the clown hits a wall. He bounces, and we hear a sound. But there's quite a lot goes on if we actually do click the button down on the mouse. We hear a different kind of sound. The clown instantly moves to a new random spot in the playing area and starts off in a new direction slightly more quickly than before because we need to make the game more and more challenging. In addition, every time you successfully hit that clown with the mouse, a click on the clown, your score in the title bar goes up by 10 points. There's one more subtle thing not written on this page that you may have noticed and that is that if you don't do anything for more than two or three seconds, the clown randomly jumps to a new spot anyway. And that's to make it more difficult, else you can just lie and wait. If he's on a vertical or horizontal streak, he's not bouncing in odd spots. You can just lie and wait for him and, and hit your mouse. And to avoid players lurking like that, we've made him move every few seconds. 
So we're going to get started on yours. Remember, the virtual classroom is at the address that you see on the screen now. And if necessary, uh, I would like you to stop the video, bookmark this, uh, write it down, put it in your planner, bookmark it on your laptop so you can get to the virtual classroom any time that you want. All right, let's go. So it's time to make your game. And if you remember the address from before, it'll bring you to the Nord virtual classroom. Log yourself in go to your class and in the assignments area you'll find your first game project. Well I see all the students as well. Read the message, there's not a lot there. This is a step-by-step -step sheet explaining everything that's being explained to you on the video. All of these files need to be put into a folder in your um, personal documents area. So right click each one, one by one by one, save link as, and in my particular case I'm putting it on the desktop. I've got a Catch the Clown Resources folder and I've popped all my files in there. So I've already grabbed all of these. Download all of those and you're ready to go. Then you'll launch Game Maker. So I'll just get rid of this for now. When you launch Game Maker, I'm running on the Mac so my version is a bit older. They have more recent Windows games. Um, I get some news from Yo-Yo Games, which you won't get, but this is what we're looking at. This area here is where we select objects to program in this area over here. Now, you'll remember that we had a whole bunch of graphics. Well, before we can use any of those graphics in our game, we have to load them into this development environment. So I'm going to right-click on sprites, because we call graphics sprites in, uh, in gaming. And the first sprite I'm going to load in will be the clown, because he's the star of our show. Let's give it a name. All the sprites will start with a little prefix on the name called SPR. And it just lets us know whenever we see the name of something that, oh, this is a sprite, because there's an SPR in front of it. Then I'll use a capital C and type clown. So there's a name for it. Now we'll load it in from that desktop folder that I had before. And there he is. And open it up and we see our little clown. So far so good, click OK and we now have a clown sprite. We need to do the same thing obviously for our um, wall. So I'll load the wall in and that's it for our two pictures there. But we did have one other graphic. We had a background. We won't pop it in the sprites area though. We'll put it into backgrounds. This one we don't have to be so fussy with the name. I'm going to load this background and I'm not even going to bother to rename it. Leave it all as it is and say OK. The last three things we need in the project to do our work with are the sounds. So we'll pop all three sounds into the sounds area and we'll start all of these with the prefix SND. Now the sounds we had were a click sound when we click on our particular little clown there. Let's have a listen to it. So it repeats over and over. That's the sound we'll get when uh, when we click on our mat on our <laughs> clown. It's very late at night at the moment. The next sound we want is when he bounces off the wall. So I'll call it SND. Well, bounce is a good name. We'll use that. Click on bounce. The final one that we need, because this gets a bit repetitive after a while, doesn't it, is the background music. So I'll just call it SND music. Load up the MIDI file that is our music and have a quick listen to it. seems to be working. Okay, at this point we have all of our sounds and our graphics in the environment ready to work. It's a good time to save. Um, so I will go File Save. Again I'll save it into my Catch the Clown folder. Don't leave this file name as it is. Make sure you give it a name and in this case we'll just call it Clown. So this GMK indicates that it's a game maker file. It's the source code for your program that you're writing and will save regularly with Control S. The next thing that we need to do is create some objects. 
Now objects are the things that actually do the work in the game. When you see the little clown moving around the room, that clown is an object. It's not this that's moving around the room. We create an object that has this graphic and that object moves around the room. And there are a couple of reasons for this that will become a little more clear later on. But until I have the sprite loaded in, I can't create the object, which is this area here. I can't create the object that looks like the clown. So let's start by creating a clown, um, our wall object. We'll do that one first. Now, have a bit of a think about it. What do you think we'll put at the start of all of our object names? Probably OBJ. Yep, you're right. Then a capital. And we'll call this one wall. And we want the wall object to have the sprite here of the wall. So I'm going to click here and load in the wall sprite. Now only sprites that we have preloaded earlier on are visible in this list. So we have to load our resources in first before we start creating objects. So there's our wall object and the wall's solid. We don't want the, the clown going through it. So we'll click solid and say OK. Everything else is fine as it is. The other object that uh, gets interacted with in the game is the clown itself. So let's create the clown. Again, what do you reckon the name will be? It's pretty straightforward, isn't it, really? ABJ Clown. We'll click here and give him the sprite of the clown. We don't have to worry about saying he's solid. Off we go. So at this point we have two objects and this is where we do our programming. Just last thing of all though is that we need a playing area and as you heard before the playing area is called a room. So let's create a playing area. We'll create a room. Here's uh, a room area and what I'm going to do is maximise this so we can see the whole thing. And I'm going to drag this across a little bit so that we can see more of these tabs. In your case all of this will just appear. Now I don't know if you noticed when we were loading the sprites but it gave us the dimensions of the sprite. It gave us the number of pixels high and wide that they were and they were actually twice this size. They were 32 by 32. And I'm just going to change the snap grid because when we place our objects in here they'll snap to that grid. And you'll see that the size of these squares matches pretty much the size of our clown. And that's kind of handy. First let's put our background in. So I'm clicking on backgrounds and choosing the background image and we get our red. The next object that I want to put in is actually a wall. So I click back on objects and down here we can choose the wall object. And to put in the wall, every time I click in goes the object and if I right click it goes away. So what I'm going to do is hold down shift and drag my way around the edges of the wall and see how accurately I can do this. Not the quickest drawer on the block, eh? Suddenly we have a wall with a playing area. There's only one thing missing, that is I want to add a clown somewhere in here. It doesn't really matter where, so I've got to choose the clown as the object I'm going to add. Back over into here, left click, bingo, we have a clown. Now I couldn't do this part until the objects had been created, and I couldn't do the objects until the sprites had been created. So there's definitely a workflow order here that you have to remember. Bring in your sprites, bring in your sounds. Create your objects and you can then place them into a room. But at this point, we can't. the, the objects aren't going to do anything. We haven't programmed the clown to move, we haven't programmed any music to play. So I'm going to click OK up here. Our room is saved and we'll get on with some programming. Now all of the programming that we're going to do in this project happens in the clown object. That's where all the action happens. It's what it's all about. So when I double click the clown object and we go back to where we were, we'll have a look at this window here. Alright, first of all, in our game we're waiting for certain events to happen. In this case we're waiting for the clown to bump into a wall, or we're waiting for the clown to be clicked on by the mouse. And when, and only when, one of those things happen, certain actions that we've programmed into this window here are going to occur. To begin with, we actually need to create a clown because a few things happen when we start up the room and create the clown. So I'm going to click Add Event and there's a whole lot of events we can look out for and I'm going to choose Create. 
there's a couple of things we want to happen when we create the clown. The first thing we want to do is start him moving in a random direction. Over here are all 